when things are going bad, there's going to be some good that's going to come from it. And, it, oh, mission got canceled? Good. We can fo focus on another one. Um, didn't get the new high-speed gear we wanted? Good. We can keep it simple. Didn't get promoted? Good. More time to get better. Didn't get funded? Good. We own more of the company. Didn't get the job you wanted? Good. You can get more experience and build a better resume. Got injured. Got injured. Sprained my ankle. Good. Needed a break from training. Got tapped out. Good. It's better to tap in training than to tap out on the street. Got beat. Good. You learned. Unexpected problems? Good. We have the opportunity to figure out a solution. And that's it. That's it. When things are going bad. What's going on everybody? It's your boy Nino back again with yes. Another video. So I see you guys like my basic training experience video. So I thought I'd make another video to go more in depth on my experiences and maybe what you guys should do to prep. Uh, what to expect and what not to expect when you guys get to basic training. So for starters, I'm going to start off saying this. Like when you guys get to basic training, you guys got to be motivated and dedicated because at the end of the day, like you guys signed up to go there and to be something better and be a part of this organization that like not many people get the opportunity to do. So when you get there, like, yes, it's going to suck. It's not supposed to, it's not meant to be fun. It's meant to test your ability to push through certain situations because here out of trade dock it's pretty hard especially when you go to the fields for the first time and like when you have to prove yourself to the people you work with every day because if you're going to be a, a, the weakest link then it's going to be kind of hard for you to like fit in so basic training is designed to break you down and mold you back up into the best person you can be so by saying that, which like a lot of people don't really take in account, but I feel like they need to. And I feel like certain recruiters like all over the world should push us out to the future soldier that's going to join the army is like to start working out prior to even like wanting to enlist before he's seeking a recruiter. You should start like, I mean, maybe not everybody is like in the financial like how can I say, like, in a, right financially to get a gym membership. Like, you don't need all kinds of fancy equipment to get a good workout. Like, I'm pretty sure if you're watching this video, you have a phone and on YouTube. So you can look up, like, home workouts and stuff, for example. Or just start running, you know, doing some push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups. I know they have stuff, like, at the parks and stuff. So you got to get out there and be dedicated to be better before you even start. And say you already have started, already enlisted, and you're going to ship out maybe one to two months out. It's better to get your body ready for all the corrective action that's going to happen when you get to basic. So you're not, you don't stun your body and then like just break down immediately. So I think that would be a good idea for you guys to start doing. So something you guys should expect when you get to basic training, it's not going to be like, it's not going to be like the commercials where it's like, oh my God, they start yelling right, yelling at you right off the rip when you get on the bus. Like they understand they're humans at the end of the day too. Like they understand like, Hey, this is new to all these people. These are all civilians and we're about to transform you guys to soldiers, but you guys don't know the ropes. You guys don't know what to do or how to do it or the standards. So Obviously, they're going to expect you guys to move with a purpose. Like I said in my last video, like everything with a purpose. Like if they tell you to go do something, don't necessarily run, but like speed walk, right? So like, yeah. And then I feel like I already talked about a lot in my previous video. So this one, I'm going to talk more about the basic training site. Like when you get there, of course, they're going to, all the drill sergeants are going to bum rush you. Like they're going to come as a swarm and like get you guys nervous get you guys out of your comfort zone 
And what they're looking right there is like, okay, who can last and who cannot last? Like, who needs the more work out of everybody here? So you, they're going to yell at you. They're going to scream at you. They're going to get in your face. They're going to try to get you nervous. They're going to try to, like, pretty much mentally get in your head to see, like, okay, this person is wants to be here. This person is dedicated to be here and to change their life. I mean, that's why everybody signed up, you know, for their own reasons. So after that, after you guys get all your stuff, whatever, and you guys get to the base, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but they do this one thing called shark attack. Shark attack is when after they like roughen you guys up and fluff your feathers and everything. It's all right, guys. Sorry for that little interruption. So, yeah, like when you just got to just remember, like just to be on your toes. I know I was talking about shark attack, so I'll get back on that. So, like when you guys. Oh, man, how do I explain it? Okay, so pretty much it's like when you guys are asleep. So, but for, let me rewind a little bit. Your guys' bedtime is like 5 o'clock, I think, 5 or 6. And you guys' wake up time is 0, 0430, which is 430 in the morning. So, they're going to try to come and sneak in before that. And like shock all you guys. Like when I was in basic... They did the shark attack to us, but I already knew. Like, I was expecting it to happen. So, I wasn't as, like, frantic and scared as everybody else was. So, like, they came in with blow horns. Uh, one drill sergeant had a uh, a pan and, like, some spatula just hitting it. Like, they're in there to cause chaos and mayhem and get everybody, like, spooked. And they come in yelling, you know, hurry up, get dressed, make your beds, you know, clean the bay, yada, yada. And just... Just to get you guys out of nowhere so you guys can understand, like, you guys need to be aware of your guys' surroundings. So, with that being said, like, that's, like, maybe two days later, maybe, after you guys did in processing and everything. So, um, another thing that is, like, pretty, like, you guys need to prepare for is, like, not only your PT test, but, like, if you guys never shot a weapon. Like, I know me... Before the army, I had shot uh, an AR-15 and a 9mm handgun. Like, those were the only two that I ever shot. And it wasn't like I shot them all the time. It was like I shot it maybe twice. And that was it, like, in my whole entire life. So, like, for you guys that are like, oh, my God, like, I never shot a gun before. Like, I don't know how to prepare for this. I don't know if I can do it or anything. It's, like, not as scary as you guys think. Before you guys even shoot, you guys go to this thing called, I think it's a uh, ETS, like electronic simulation, something, something like that. So you guys go to this, like, I don't know if you guys' high schools or middle school had these, but they look like, they're called portables. They pretty much look like a big shipping container. And like, they have simulated like a simulated range they have like fake rifles fake and force with fake magazines but they have this like big projector it's like a big video game and like when you shoot it's a uh, air it's like co connected to like a compressor so it gives you like the kind of like the little jolt of actually shooting around so you go to that maybe three or four times i believe and then after that, you guys do the dime training. You guys do, like, other little things to prep you guys. They teach you guys how to, like, inhale. And then when you exhale, at the lowest point of your exhale, that's when you pull the trigger. Because, you know, you guys are going to shoot iron sights. You guys are going to learn what that is. And then you guys are going to shoot CCO, which is, like, the little scope on the rifle. Like, you guys see in, like, Call of Duty and stuff like that. So, um... Yeah, it's nothing to be scared of. Like, at first, when I shot, I was kind of nervous because you guys have to qual on that, which qualify, qual, qualify. So, you, they give you 40 rounds, and you have to shoot, I think, above a 23. So, you got to shoot 23 out of 40. Like, the odds are kind of in your favor, you know? And it's not like, oh, my God, if you don't qualify the first time, like, that's it. No, they give you, like, multiple 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 times to shoot like i know this one kid he probably shot maybe like 
250 rounds one day and he still didn't even qualify like it was it was crazy but it wasn't his fault you know he was just nervous he never shot before and like he just I don't know what his problem was but I mean it happens to the best of us and there's nothing to be looked down upon or be embarrassed about it's just like you know some people are not raised in that type of environment to be around firearms or anything like that so it's okay um but after that you guys shoot iron sights and then you qualify on that and then you're like yeah man like i just did it even though i was scared and whatnot yada yada but you did it you know so on to the next phase you shoot cco which is with the scope and it's a little red dot for me it was kind of hard because believe it or not i'm colorblind to reds and greens and stuff like that so it was kind of hard for me because we shot in the daytime and then the next because you guys you guys get i think like two qual days so one day i shot but then like it was time for us to go so i didn't get to shoot all of my rounds and the next day was like a really bad overcast <clears throat> so it was like kind of hard for me to see the dot like the little red dot that's in the cco so it was whatever obviously i did it i'm not like the best fucking shooter but i tried my best and i had like some really great drill sergeants that like they put a i think it was yellow like a bright yellow and black little stickers like the little circle stickers on where i need to shoot and i'm like that really helped because then i can see it down down like in the scope it was like so much easier to do it like that and i'm sure all drill sergeants are you know there to well they're all there to help you and i'm sure they'll be like you know figure out a way to help you in your situation if you guys are something like that but um yeah you shoot cco but you guys got to keep in mind too it's not going to be like well you shoot and then that's it no it's like if you if you don't qual the first day then the second day they have these like um uh what do you call like these like little like these little groups where they will have you like do the dime they'll have you like you know practice your breathing and like stuff like that to help you help yourself kind of so when you go to shoot again you're more like okay this is what i learned to do this is how i learned to do it i need to shoot on the exhale not on my inhale because believe it or not say this is your m4 let me scoot over a little bit i'll give you guys like a little a little preview so when you hold this is how i learned to shoot so you hold the buttstock here and like you see how you can like rotate your shoulder a little bit that's where you want your you want to roll in your shoulder to the buttstock you want to like kind of bring it up and like say this is a buttstock here on my shoulder the buttstock's here and then i want to see how my cheek rolls up a little bit that's a good solid like uh contact with the buttstock so you're gonna shoot and then you see look at i'll go like this so look at this finger and tell me if you see it rise and like fall so if you shoot on your inhale you're gonna shoot like way off maybe to the left or to the right or whatnot but if you shoot on your exhale it's gonna be right on like not really necessarily dead center but it's gonna be in the range of where you want it to go on the silhouette that you gotta shoot so with that being said, like, don't be too nervous about it. Like, you're gonna, you can do it. Like, there's really nothing to it but to do it. You know what I'm saying? So, the next thing after that is, uh, oh, wait, let me, let me rewind a little bit. While you guys are in the range, you guys are gonna have live bullets. Like, you guys are gonna have real ammunition that can, like, literally hurt someone. So, you guys need to have muzzle awareness, okay? Like, this is a lot of stuff that they teach us, and they're going to teach you guys when you go. But I'm just here telling you guys so it can be in your mind and be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. That's what I read. That's what I heard on YouTube, you know? So, muzzle awareness is, like, you don't want to flash your friend like this with your rifle because, like, if you don't have it on safe and you have your finger on the trigger for whatever reason, like, you know, you forget or, you know, you just... You know, just starting yelling at you and you get nervous and you're just walking like frantically and then you accidentally pull the trigger. Either A, 
it can really hurt someone or be like you'll miss or hit the sand hit the dirt you know and scare yourself and then like that's not good for anybody because then like okay well so and so it's not having mode awareness like you know we're gonna kick them off the range for today and then that's your it's like pretty much your loss because you could qualify that day and don't have to wait for the next day so just have muzzle awareness always have your muzzle pointed down range so if it did go off there's nobody out there in the range to like really get affected by the bullet going off i mean people might get scared and like jump like oh my god what the heck just happened you know so yeah always be aware where your muzzle is and make sure your weapon's always on safe and on green okay you're gonna they're gonna teach you like green amber red and all that stuff so the next thing after that is uh well i where i went south carolina i don't know if it's called the same thing everywhere else but it's victory victory tower so victory tower is uh they have like a little obstacle course it's to give you confidence and like people that are scared of heights like myself that's made to like know that you can believe in yourself that you got yourself that you won't let nothing happen to yourself so it's pretty much repelling off the wall i mean there's really nothing to it you just repel off the wall but they do have like instructors there like certified instructors to do repelling and teach you how to repel and show you the ropes and everything like before you even repel they have like this little incline wall that's literally maybe four feet high that you practice to jump down and it's literally like three jumps and it's, it's four feet high so if you did fall it's like you just tripping nothing's gonna happen you know and you do that until you get comfortable they're not gonna like you go do this right now right here like you don't have no time to practice no nothing like nothing like that like nothing crazy they give you the um they show you how to do it they show you what to do they pretty much give you all the guidance and then leave it in your hands to you know do it yourself because you what that's designed to do is to build confidence in yourself and know that like you can do anything you pretty much set your mind to that's the part of them that's breaking you down and molding you into a soldier something way better than what you came in not saying you're a bad person when you go in but like they're building you better character if that makes sense so after that you go to the field you have three fields um three field problems one you spend the night uh two days a night and then three days four nights i think and then the last one is like a whole week which is not bad it sounds like oh my god a whole week in the field like it sounds crazy but those times in the field really like tests you and like tests your friends and really show show you what you're about and like how your friends are and like just so they're really there for you because i remember let me see the first field problem was easy second field problem was like kind of hard because everywhere you go you ruck and like it sounds bad but it's really not that bad so yeah so then after that you i think it's gas the gas chamber and i already know everybody like oh my god the gas chamber like i don't want to get gas like who in their right mind will do that for fun but let me tell you, it was fun. It was fun. Like, I was nervous myself when I went in. Like, for everything they're doing, basically, you're going to be nervous. Because, one, you never did it before. Two, you don't know the outcome because you never did it before. And three, you just don't know what to do because you never did it before. So, the gas chamber was, like, one of those things was, like, dude, like, what if I, like, pass out right here? Or what if I die right here? Like, oh, my God. But one you can't they like i don't think you can ever die from just inhaling it's a uh, think tear gas or something like that and two like you're gonna be fine like nothing has ever happened to anybody like you're good so it's not that bad just remember to flap your arms like a bird when you get out of the room take deep breaths and you'll be good you'll be straight like 100 straight up so after that it was like pretty much like the the biggest things are like range gas chamber like those are like the biggest things 
to really like be worried about because they're like the biggest things that you guys got to do you know what i'm saying but other than that um we'll talk about some things you should expect and what things you shouldn't expect one thing you guys should expect is like your drill sergeant to be professional and like there for you guys like of course they're going to be hard asses on you during the daytime because that's literally their job is to be hard asses on you guys but to a certain extent like if you feel like like they're picking on you or like if you feel like discriminated or anything you guys always have the right to go to you guys as like first sergeant or even to the chaplain like that's your guys' right to do it's called open door policy so don't feel like there's no way out for anything but i doubt you guys will ever go through something like that because this new army is like on top of everything you know like these drill sergeants won't ever well i don't i'm not gonna say they won't ever because when i where i was like that never happened but i did hear stories like some people felt discriminated or like profiled because of you know whatever xyz so just know that there's always some something called the open door policy you, you guys can use and talk to your guys' commander and let him know what's going on and like he'll fix the problem so yeah a lot of people don't know that but it's very good that you guys know just in case you guys come into a situation like that or maybe one of your battle buddies come to you uh with something like that and you, you know you can tell them the information another thing you guys uh should not expect is to go there and make friends because first of all the girls and the guys they're not allowed to like really you guys are not really allowed to communicate with each other only if it has to do like with the work like if you guys are in the field or if you guys are at a confidence course or if you guys like are doing something that like is work related but other than that you guys are not supposed to communicate with each other and you guys shouldn't like really even be hurt by that rule because like you guys went there by yourself to better yourself and to do something for yourself not to go make friends or relationships or anything like that anything crazy i mean if it happens you meet somebody there like cool awesome you know but just remember like you guys went there for a purpose and like don't let anything discourage you guys or detour you from graduation because I did have maybe like three or four people like uh get kicked out because they were having uh like relationships with people and like uh sexual relationships with people during like the field and stuff like that. So they did get kicked out because one, it's not allowed and two, it's just like not right to do. So yeah, so just just putting that out there. Um something you guys should expect is you guys do get on sundays to go to church whether they have all kinds of ceremonies not just like christian or catholic they have uh new what is that called uh new new christian or something like that i'm not sure uh they have catholic they have jehovah witness i think that's what it's called they have like I don't know what they have like even buddhism if you do buddhism they have like all kinds of services there for you guys' religion so on sundays you guys can go to religious services and if they say no there comes that open door policy and then you tell somebody like hey so and so is telling me no i can't go and go to uh religious services today uh, but, you know, I need to go to religious services, you know, whatever, whatever. Because they cannot stop you on Sundays from practicing your religion. Um, another thing you guys should know is this thing called Sharp. Uh, it, uh, if you feel like, you know, another... Because they're going to call you guys Chinese or whatever, whatever. But it's Sharp is designed. So if you feel... It's sexual... Sharp sounds for sexual harassment uh and rape prevention or something like that so that is pretty much everything if somebody's harassing you like either sexually or verbally if you know god forbid something happens like you get raped or something i never heard of anything like that um oh what else 
just like of anything like somebody tries to come on to you or just anything in general like that you guys have sharp representatives and all that stuff where you guys can make complaints and stuff and they do have things for eo i think it's like equal opportunity no not equal opportunity yeah i think it's like equal opportunity like so if you feel like you're getting discriminated because your race your color your ethnicity you know for whatever reason you guys will have an eo representative there too for that um let me see what else you guys do eat three times a day like that's off tops so breakfast lunch and dinner and they do give you guys like a little power bar at the end of the day with mail um let me see what else i'm trying to get everything little so you guys are like mentally prepared and stuff um let me see uh oh let's talk about like chores and stuff it's not really called chores over there it's called like aos you guys will have to mop the concrete it's just like a part of an ao you guys do have to sweep it uh you guys will have to fill up the water buffalo you guys are gonna learn what that is it's just like this big barrel container that you fill your camelbacks up with you know so you guys will have to fill that up you guys will have to fill up uh the other water buffalo that is attached to the truck that they take out to the field with you guys um and clean it you guys will have to like you know clean the cap the classrooms clean the stairs clean the bays um i mean like i feel like after you guys clean like when you guys know you guys have to clean that's like pretty much like the end of the day so that's what i used to look forward to it's like man when we have to mop this concrete like it sounds stupid but it's like man like it's gonna be pretty awesome because that sounds like the end of the day so um let me see what else let me see uh you guys get mail like i said to the family members you should tell your family members like you know write you or send you stuff like mole skin so you don't get blisters like chapstick stuff like that so you don't have to buy it yourself you know um let's see speaking about mail uh don't send candy don't send chips cookies like sodas or anything like that because it is going to get confiscated not necessarily th not necessarily thrown in the trash it will go with your belongings but like it's just gonna spoil or rot or like whatever you know what i'm saying so might as well just save it for family day and graduation because you guys already get to eat whatever you want that day or those days um yeah uh, let's see what else should we talk about um Mm, what else can I think of? Um, I, I feel like that like kind of wraps it up. Like that's pretty much like everything just in like 22 minutes. Um, let's see. Am I forgetting anything? Uh, let me see. Hygiene, you guys will always get the opportunity to do hygiene after PT. Uh, you guys will do PT every day, every morning, like we still do it over here in this army every morning. Um, let me see. What else? What else? What else? Let me think. Let me think. I'm thinking about how my mornings used to go over there. Um, I think that's it. So I'm going to head out. I have to go do other stuff. I'm just making this quick video because everybody's just chilling. So I'm just chilling too. So if you guys want to know more about basic training, I'll make an AIT video too. But all AIT is different so I'm gonna only speak about mine and my experiences there so yeah that's all I got for you guys today so thanks for watching the video peace